I moved to Spain and I knew it was going to be difficult. Um, but I fully embraced, I am fully embraced that I started taking Spanish lessons as, as soon as I could. I didn't want to go to Spain and um, live in a hotel for a while. I mean, I'm, I'm only talking about a footballer's life, so you have to excuse me. But I, I presume when people relocate, this is, yeah. this is what happens as well. Um, I didn't want to live in a hotel, certainly for an, uh, for an amount of time. I just thought it would be, uh, and it would just have a negative impact on me, having five suitcases in a hotel room or even in a big hotel room. Um, I just thought I wanted to sort of try and settle into a normal life. And I mean normal life as in with my own house, with my own belongings, with my own comforts around me, you know. Um, so I was conscious of that. So before I joined um, the team I played for in Spain, I went secretly a couple of months earlier um, and looked at houses, apartments, you know, um, as many as I possibly could in the, in, in the days that I was there because I was conscious about I wanted somewhere that when I went back to six weeks later to, to, to start my first day uh, at the football team, that I was almost into this house. Um, so that's what I did. I went for I went for about two or three days. I didn't tell the club because, you know, the club I played for would have told the, the press and it would have been a, a bit of a bit of a sh charade going round, you know, getting with all these press following me. So me and my wife went in private, looked at about 20, 30 um, uh, properties, houses, apartments in various areas and chose one. So when I went back six weeks later, um, I'd almost, I had a night in a hotel maybe and then I started work and I went on pre-season tour for two weeks and that was difficult because I, I, I got taken away from my comfort zone. I literally trained in the morning and in the afternoon we went to, I think we went to Austria, I think it was for a couple of weeks and just to get away from the heat and I was locked away with 30, 40 people and I think there was one of them maybe who spoke English, a uh, French lot. Um, so it was it was really really difficult seeing people seeing Spanish people seeing Brazilian people who you know of course had accents of, of, of Portuguese um, who could speak Spanish you know French lads you know people from all over the globe and then you you're all just thrown into this melting pot and you know it's, brutally it's like you have to get on with it you know there's nobody holding your hand or putting their arm around you because you can't speak English and you know as I said to you before I'd just sit and I'd talk and I'd say hola and I'd you know I'd say this and I'd do this and and I'd sit up till two o'clock and they'd all be having a beer and I'd be with them and they'd all be telling all these stories in Spanish that I couldn't understand and then they'd go to bed and I'd go good night and I'd go but it was um incredibly lonely you know particularly those two weeks when you're on the tr when you're on the football field it was fine when you trained, it was great. You're running around, you're playing football, you're showing them how good you are at football. So you're passing that test instantly. Oh, we can play football, actually. He's OK. And then you, then later on, at dinner time, you know, as I said, at dinner, you could easily have just gone to your room for six hours and just, you know, huddled yourself away. But I, I always thought it was important that I sat with them and um, sort of tried to win them over that way. And then at the end of that trip, they probably thought, actually, he's, he's, a, good, he's a good guy, this fella you know, and, um, and, and thought that was fine as well. 